guys, welcome back. It's just Avery this time, Bella had to go to class. But uh, give it up for our speakers, amazing job. So luckily for me, both of you guys have made documentaries. So if you had a time machine and an unlimited budget, what event would you make a documentary on? Oh gosh, yeah. is this on? Yeah, that is such a, it's a great question. What event? Event, person, topic. Hmm. Do you have an idea? Um, yeah, there's so many. I'll have to think about it. I think my answer would probably be, I grew up with both my parents being Native American uh, anthropologists, so I'd probably come back to like when Columbus came to America and document how that really went, because um, I feel like a lot of the times we don't really learn about that history as accurately as we should. Yeah, I'd say, you know, one of the things I'd like to probably focus on is how the structures of schools started. So we have a lot of information about history and uh, you know the history of the United States, the history of other countries. Um, I'd like to really learn about who created the concept of going to school and how they developed, you know, what that looks like, what kids learn, what they don't learn, and how it's progressed up until now. So. Yeah, those are both amazing answers. Um, so we have a lot of Twitter activity right now. Um, so Zane. Uh, what is your favorite thing to take photos of? Um, favorite thing to take photos of? I think it's kind of cliche or kind of a cop out, but whatever project I'm working on at the time, um, for me, the, the visuals are sort of a means of communication. So um, right now I'm working on a project about a rock climber, so I'll say rock climbing. <laughs> yeah, I get that, going from thing to thing. Um, Aruj, do you ever feel looked down on because wherever you're from, whether that be Kentucky or Karachi, and if so, what did you do about it? I don't know if looked down on is a really an accurate way to describe it, but I'd say that there was a lot of curiosity about me. And sometimes it was a positive curiosity and sometimes it was negative. I'd say that growing up in a small town in Kentucky was re really tough for me because people saw that I looked a little different, I, yeah, I spoke fluent English. There were teachers of mine that didn't understand how those two things could, you know, exist, coexist. Um, there were people that would ask me if, like when I told them I was from Pakistan, they'd ask me what state that was. So, you know, I think we've come a long way from, that, from there. So I'd say it was a, a kind of a curiosity that was stemmed in just not, not understanding and knowing. And how I overcame it, I'd say that as I got older, I started to look at those things that made me unique as a strength rather than a weakness because I think when you're told you're different as you're growing up, you can start to think that that is a negative thing. But as I got old, older, I tried to kind of flip that and uh, now I see it as a strength of mine. That's so awesome. It's always great to incorporate your identity into things. Um, so Zane, we have a lot of curiosity about the Rams deal. Why didn't you take it? <laughs> and uh, your opinion on the Super Bowl. Um, so, I have zero interest in football. I absolutely do not care for it at all. Um, in that Rams contract, I'll be honest, they, for a multi-million, billion dollar organization, they do not pay their employees what they should. And so, when um, I saw the number and I saw who it was from, I said, you guys clearly don't respect me as much as I should be. So, that was that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Um, for Rouge, what advice do you have for educators and student leaders on how to support the mental health of middle school students and high school students? Yeah, great question. And that's something that is kind of a big topic now um, since COVID. Um, I'd say that we all need to have outlets, right? So one of the things I love about the university setting, particularly here at WKU, is that it seems like you guys have so many ways to express yourself. Um, so just like you need to have checkups on your physical health, making sure that you take time to pay attention to the expression that you need to kind of go through in order to take care of your mental health. So doing something on a weekly basis, on a bi-weekly basis to help relax you, whether that's meditation, playing a sport, drawing, talking to someone, um, I'd say that that's really key to ensuring that you 
are able to stay sane during this really crazy time in the world. Yeah, it is crazy. Um, so Zane, this is a very philosophical question. Mm -hmm. Does art have to mean anything or can you just make art because you like doing it? You should always make art because you just like doing it. I'd, I've always told myself if this ever started to feel like a chore or something that I wasn't fully into, then I would probably go find something else to do. Um, I think the thing about art that I loved and always loved is that there's no right or wrong answer. There's no teacher that can tell you that you earned a C or that you earned an A. Regardless, like it's, it's all subjective. It's all what you want it to be, and there's no right or wrong way to do it. So I think uh, humans should do more of those activities in general. Yeah, for sure. Um, Aruj, what is your favorite memory from Pakistan? Oh my gosh, probably that camel, you know? <laughs> yeah, that was, that was fun. Although, I mean, I wouldn't have really remembered it until I saw that picture, but th there are lots of kind of cool things like that in Pakistan that aren't really allowed here in the United States. So, um, you know, th those types of things, riding on animals, like being able to see family members, there are kids all over the streets all the time, cars going everywhere, like that type of stuff I miss a lot, so. Yeah, um, for both of you, we have a lot of questions of, did you ever have a time you wanted to give up that stands out or just, a time when things were really tough and how do you get through it? I'll go first. Um, yeah, there were lots of times in my life where I felt like I couldn't continue the path that I was on. Um, and I'd say it was like a, progress, like a progressive thing. I never got to a point where I was like, okay, this is hard and I'm gonna give up. It was always, this is hard, let me take a break, let me step back and let me try again. Kind of like that graph where you, you try and then you kind of like go down a little bit, then you try and maybe you get a little higher, then you go down a little bit. As long as you're going up over a period of time, that's, that's what matters. Um, I'd say what got me through it is just like building resiliency, um, understanding that you know, there's a purpose for me beyond what my environment gives me, and just believing in yourself. I know that sounds cliche, but if you keep persistently trying at something, you, you know, you will succeed and failure is a part of that. So kind of seeing failure as something that's necessary instead of an obstacle. So I guess for my answer, a lot of the things um, you covered just now, I think a big thing is knowing um, when to keep pushing and learn from your failures and when to kind of take a step back and um, think about it in terms of your whole life. I think for me, my first time where I've ever actually had to take a serious break from this happened a couple months ago. Um, my dad was in the hospital and we didn't know if he was gonna make it. I was midway through work on a project that my editor told me needed some adi like additional footage. I got the footage, I got the news about my dad and I didn't add it to my project because I felt that I needed to take care of my family. I needed to take care of myself as the one that was helping my dad in this time. And um, looking back on it, I definitely think I made the right decision. Um, at that time, any work I would have done would have been done with kind of a clouded mindset and not my full capabilities. So I think it's important to know when you have too much on your plate and when you need to kind of take a step back and collect yourself and focus on just your, your mental health and your emotional health rather than solely your output. Yeah, and it's, I mean, it's awesome when you enjoy your field. Um, luckily, that helps a lot. What is your favorite part of your field? My favorite part would be all the kids. I love kids. Um, that's why I went into child psychiatry. Um, I love how kids just don't care. <laughs> um, exactly, see, you guys don't care. <laughs> Most of the time when you're in medicine and you're, you have a patient, they are, you know, not that they're not honest with you, of course they are, but a lot of times adults have a bit of an agenda and they want to present themselves a certain way. And kids are just, you know, they don't have that. They don't, you know, they're, they're very carefree. They don't want to convince you of anything. If they don't like you, they'll tell you you know, or you'll figure it out. And if they do, then they connect with you well. So I'd say, I'd say just um, being able to connect with kids is my favorite part. Similarly, my favorite part is definitely being able to just connect with a diverse amount of people. I've met some of my best friends um, through the actual practice of what I do. And I've met some of my biggest inspirations and just some really great people through uh, documenting them and their families. So definitely the same answer.
Yeah, and it's great that you guys both mentioned people because a lot of people are asking who inspired you throughout your journey, role models, inspirations, et cetera, et cetera. Good question. So I would say, you know, this was asked previously as well, and I think it's wonderful to have role models. Everyone should have somebody that they can look at and say, you know what, I want to be where they are. But I really, honestly, I don't think it's a necessity to really look at anywhere outside of yourself in order to find inspiration. Um, I don't really believe in role models, to be honest. I don't think there's anybody that can have the unique qualities that you do. Like these guys in the front, they're all unique. Guys in the back are unique, right? Everyone is unique. No one can bring to the table what you can. So I don't think I have any one particular role model. There are a group of people that I'm inspired by and I draw inspiration from. Uh, for example, Ava DuVernay, if anybody's heard of her, she's a director, producer. She produced The 13th, uh, which was on kind of the, uh, the systematic way that racism is infused into our politics. So that, you know, that's, that's somebody I look up to. But in terms of a role model, I, you know, I, I don't really have one. Um, on the furthest opposite end of that spectrum, I feel like I have a role model for everything. Um, I have people like my dad and... Um, my close friends, my girlfriend, who I really look up to in their outlooks on life. I have filmmakers, um, Jimmy Chin, who made Free Solo, if you guys are um, familiar with that. He's definitely a big inspiration. Um, but I also think I just get inspired by people who I see doing something interesting, whether that's they have cool outfits, they make music, whatever it is. Um, yeah, I think I'm mostly inspired by people who aren't just one thing. So. I'm not going to be inspired by someone who is only a photographer. They need to kind of bring some pizzazz to what they do and be interested in multiple things for me to really find inspiration from them. Yeah, um, that's amazing. And I love how polar opposite your guys' answers are. This is probably the last question, so it's to both of you. And a lot of it is just, how do you get started? How do I take the first step? Um, and for Zane, a lot of people are asking how you got interested in photography. And Aruj, a lot of people are asking when you first started learning English. Um, but just in general, like, what step do you take? Well, um, so I'll answer the English question. So I was taught English in school in Pakistan. Although my English was not, I was not as fluent as I am now, obviously, um, when, you know, when I moved to the United States. But I'd say what you need to do to get started is honestly just not be afraid to fail. Um, understanding that, you know, if you talk to 10 people about an idea, you may get nine no's. But all you need is just that one. You know, you need one yes in order to take your idea to the next level. So... Shifting a mentality, you know, one of the most like transformative experiences of my life is when I failed at something so much that I became fearless. You know, I no longer really had any kind of like fear about what I could try or what I could attempt because the worst possible thing that I thought could happen, you know, did happen. So even though that was, uh, you know, really turbulent time for me, it allowed me to kind of build myself up into somebody who is resilient and not afraid to fail. So I'd say that's the first step, is just changing your mentality. Um, so I'll answer the photography question initially. Um, so I was just hanging out with my friend. He, um, we exchanged Instagrams, and he was a photographer. And that was pretty much like, oh, this looks cool. And I saved up money from like a summer job and bought a camera. Um, but in terms of taking the first step, I think it is just sort of not being afraid to put yourself out there. Um, just go out and try and look at what you do and look at what you liked about it and keep doing that and look at what you don't like about it and change that. And um, you'd probably disagree with me on this, but look at people's work that you're inspired by and don't try to copy it, but maybe think of uh, one or two things that you, um, specific details that you really like about what they do and um, try to look at how you can do something similar. Yeah, thank you guys so much for offering such unique perspectives. Give them up. Give it up. Awesome.